you are at an absolute advantage if you are not technical and you are looking to automate different processes in your business. But what is automation? It's taking a task that is repeatable and getting it to happen on its own. Now, before I get into all of this, we are going to be using no code tools. What that means is they do not require you to write any custom code in order to have things automated. Things have changed over the last couple of years. Platforms like Zapier, Make, Go High Level have been introduced and have brought automation to people who aren't technical. And now with a few clicks, you can have a task running entirely on autopilot. Now, the secret that people who aren't technical have over people who are technical when it comes to automation is non-technical people don't seem to get as stuck in the endless automation loop as people who are technical, meaning they don't try and automate everything and they just focus on the task at hand. Usually they can get a couple of things up and running and build on it over time and not focus on doing everything all at once. Automation follows an if this, then that formula. And what that essentially means, if something happens, then something else will happen. The ifs can be so many different things, literally millions, a calendar booking, a form being filled out, a new document being created. If you can do it on the internet, it most most likely can be an e and the that's can be thousands of other things as well. Let me give you a really simple example. Someone fills out an onboarding form and then a Slack message is sent to the company saying that they have a new applicant. Now, the reason this is so powerful is because now you can start to leverage systems instead of just your time where you may had to take that initial form submission once and then send an internal notification that now happens automatically, which it may have taken you five minutes previously. Now it takes you literally 0.5 of a second. Alex Hormozzi says that leverage is getting more output for the units of time that you put in. And if you're getting more done, you become more productive and you have higher points of leverage. And not only can you free up your time, but you can start scaling your business so much faster. Now, automation is relatively inexpensive to set up. Most of the platforms I'm gonna talk about and I'm gonna show you have a free trial and even the low tiers is still a lot cheaper than employing someone to do these tasks. So we're gonna go through creating your first automation. For this, we're gonna be using Zapier. If you haven't heard of Zapier before, it's probably the most popular no-code automation tool. If you wanted to go and create an account before you get started, pause here and go. So once you sign up with Zapier, they're going to ask you a couple of questions about what you do. Now, this doesn't really limit your ability at all. They're just collecting data about you. So you can just kind of put whatever. It doesn't really matter. And it's also going to ask you what applications you use most frequently. For this example, I'm just going to say Slack and Google Calendar. Email, Twitter and Google. It's then gonna give me recommendations based on what I've selected. So once we've arrived at Zapier and we're at the dashboard, we're gonna head over to the land click create zap. Now a zap is just an automation running. They call it zaps because it's one thing zapped to another creative. And what we can do here is create our first automation. So we've got our if, which they're calling a trigger. And then we have our action, which is our that. So if this, then that. So let's say we select Google calendar and our event is going to be when a new calendar event is created. So new event trigger is when an event is created and we're going to press continue. So every time a new event is created, this will run. You will have to sign in with your Google calendar for this to work. I've just connected mine now and I've selected my calendar here. Whenever an event is created inside this calendar, the next action is going to run. We press continue. It's going to bring up the test, which is basically it looks for an event that's been created recently. So this can be any of your ifs it checks for a recent calendar creation or something that's happened recently to use as testing data. So we're gonna press test trigger, no events found because it's a new calendar, but we're gonna skip this for the time. And it's gonna give me some fake data that I can then use in my Zap. So we've got our John Doe, we're gonna press continue. And now whenever I get a booking on my calendar, I want it to send me a Slack message. So I'm gonna go into actions here and I'm gonna select Slack. And the event I'm going to select is send a message. So if I type in message here, send a direct message, connect my Slack, and we're gonna press continue. And now what we're gonna do is go through the different fields that it requires to actually have the automation run. So anything with an asterisk means it needs to be filled out. So this one here, to username, we're just gonna select Matt, which is me. And the message text, I can actually input all of the information from the calendar booking that was made previously. So if I want the name of the person, I can say, organize a display name, which will send me their name. I can also have their email. And then I can also have what time the event begins. And we're gonna send this as a bot. The bot name, I'm gonna call it Larry the lead bot. And the robot icon, because it's a robot, robot face. And we're not gonna include a link to the zap. And that's pretty Pretty much all we need to do. If we press continue and now we press test action, it will have successfully sent a message to Slack with the information of the 
calendar appointment. There's a couple of things you need to understand when it comes to automation at a bit of a higher level. And that is conditional logic. This kind of logic is based off the if else framework. And my knowledge of it comes from when I used to code in university and now I've brought it to automation as well. But it is very common for people in the automation space to use. How it works is basically if something is equal to something, then do something and everything else, do something set. So if something is true, do one course of action. If something is false, do another course of action. Or if something is equal to one, do one thing. If something is equal to two, then do another. Thing. For example, if you have two products in your store, one is worth $10 and one is worth $20, and you want a different receipt sent to someone based on what item they purchase, you would use if else logic here to differentiate between the two. So if sale is equal to $10, send the $10 receipt. For everything else, send the $20 receipt. Now that's a very basic situation and it does have errors if you increase the amount of products you sell, but you can see what I mean. Another type of logic is contains logic, which that is really an if else statement as well. However, it's a little bit more simple that it just checks to see if something like a field or a input from a user contains either letters, numbers, or characters. For example, you manage a car yard and you have four salespeople, each is well-versed in a separate type of car. So you might have Audi, Ford, Chevy, Holden. And say you get an inquiry comes in that they've selected Audi. You wanna make sure that goes to your Audi specialist. So when you're filtering through the form in Zapier, you would use a contains Audi, then send that lead to your specialist salesperson in Audi. And the way you would do that is follow. Let's say for example here, you've just had a new booking for someone to come in and visit your car yard. And they've filled out a form that does denote that Audi is the car that they're after. You're gonna press on the plus. So you're gonna press the plus and you're gonna find the path option as the action. Now path A, we're going to say that the rule here only continue if, let's say for this, for example, the summary is the car name, then contains Audi. And then whatever action that you put after these paths is going to only run when they have selected Audi. Now, obviously this isn't gonna run because it's not the use case that we've set up. And this secondary path could be if summary contains Ford, then run those actions after it. So now we've got Audi and Ford. A third type of logic in automation is when logic. So when logic is built to to run at a specific time. Situations where this would run is where you have things that happen consistently at the same time, either every day or every week. So say for example, at 7 a.m. every day, if you wanted to send a message to your Slack that you hope everyone has a fantastic day, you could set up a automation that every time at 7 a.m. it sends a new message. Or if you have a weekly reminder that you want everyone to fill out their timesheets, you can then have that run on a Friday. And the way we would do this is we would find the schedule trigger. So schedule by Zapier. We're going to choose our event. In this case, it's every day. Trigger on weekends, we're going to select no, because if it's weekdays, have a good day. You don't need to send it on the weekend. And then the time of day is going to be at 8 a.m. Cool, it's just going to test and skip the test. And then we're going to send out a Slack message, send channel message, and to the general channel, we're going to say, have a great day. And then every day at 8 a.m., that message is going to send. So where should you start with automation? When it comes to automating different processes in your business and your life, I always start with the absolute easiest ones possible. Because if it's too complicated, you're probably going to get a bit disheartened when it takes you a while or you're gonna make mistakes setting. What I've done is created a checklist of the top 20 most common automations I build for myself and my clients that you can run through and have a look at. It's this, this one here. You can download it from the link below and you can create a checklist of which ones you look, can implement into your business. In conclusion, there are so many things that can be automated and so many new automations coming out every single day. And if you've made it this far and you're looking at how you can potentially automate your business but you don't have the time to do it yourself, uh, you can schedule a call with me below and um, we can have a bit of a consultation around how I would automate your business and where we would kind of start. And if you're looking for more information about how to start an automation business, you can follow the link below and get my free course and access to my free disc. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out.